Hello, um, I'm going to show you how to do orthographic projection in 2D design. You're either going to be drawing your tea light holder or you're going to be drawing your box. Um, the first thing I think you should do which you'll find um, helps you with your drawing is add in a picture of your product in the corner uh, so you've got something to follow. You can take this from your design work that you've got uh, and then you can um, take a photograph and copy and paste it in. Um, next thing you need to do is change the size of your page by going to Setup, Drawing and Layout and change your page into A3 because then you should be able to draw to scale. So I'm changing my size, I'm just going to move my product over into the corner and then I'm going to start drawing. I'm going to draw three angles, I'm going to draw the top view which will be this bit with the tea light, I'm going to draw the front view and I'm going to draw the side view which we can't see but it's just a plain piece of wood. I'm going to start with the top view by drawing a square. Now my square needs to be 54 because the size of the wood was uh, 54 by 27 so when you put it together, two pieces together here you would have 54 by 54. You should have have your measurements on your diagram somewhere to help you. So I'm going to start by drawing a box. When I click on the page, I'm going to try and get it close onto one of the dots. When I click on the page and drag out, you can see that relative down here, um, let me just undo that so I can show you, relative will change and relative will give me the size that I'm drawing. So down here where it says REL, these will change as I draw. So I'll go again, I'm going to put it on a dot and I'm going to drag out and I want 54 by 54. So when I get near the size, instead of using the mouse, it's easier to use the arrow keys on my keyboard to get it to the exact size. So I'm just clicking on the arrows and you can see that those measurements are moving. And then I can press enter and that's the size of the top piece of my tea light holder. I'm now going to draw the front view and for that I'm going to again go on the dot so that it's lined up. So your views should be lined up. So the side of your top should line up with the side of your front. Um, and then oh, I've got it 54 so I now just need to make it 150. I'm going to use the arrows again because it's quicker and easier to get it to the size and enter. So I've got my top and I've got my front view. My side view will be the same as my front in size but I'm going to copy and paste it in a minute once I've drawn in my blind hole. So the blind hole is the bit where the tea light sits in. First of all we're going to do the circle on the top. So if I double click on the circle tool it brings up the radius. Now the size of the Forstner bit was 4.5 so half will be 2.25 and that should draw the size that I want for my tea light. Oh, no, it's 22.25, sorry, measurements are wrong. Try again. So it'll be 22.5, that'll be more like it. There we go. And then I can place my circle in the middle of my top piece, my top view. And once you've clicked, you need to drag out and click again, otherwise it won't place it in there and I'll delete out the one I did wrong. Um, I then want to line up my or show the depth of my uh, blind hole in this piece of wood and I'm going to do that by using uh, a dashed line because that shows me that it's an invisible line but it's still important to know in the construction of the product so I need to know the depth that I want to drill that hole um, so I'm going to line up. So I'm drawing lines from my circle above so that when I add in my lines in a second, they'll be accurate and lined up with above so it's relative to where the hole would be in my front view. I'm then going to change the line here to dash and do my box, my square tool again, and I'm going to draw in my measurement. Again you can use relative to check the depth that you're doing it. You can see that it changes when I move. Um, I can't remember the depth I've done so I'm going to do it at 2. And then I'm going to delete out the bits I don't need. 
uh, which were the lines that I just used as a guide. So this shows me the depth of that blind hole, but it shows me that it's inside using the dashed line so that I know that it's not a, a cutout on the side or the front of the wood. Now I can copy and paste this over because it will be exactly the same as the side. So I'm going to copy here and I'm going to move it to the side and again I'm going to keep it in line and I'm going to put it on those dots and I'm going to line it up so it's all in line. So this is really important to keep everything lined up. Next thing I need to do is I need to add in my butterfly design. Um, to make it easier to add in that, um, with it being on the side here, what I can do is I can just draw over the top of that shape. Oh, I've still got my dash line, so I'm going to undo that and I'm going to just change my line back to solid and have another go. So because I've got it on top here, oh sorry, I've got my design on my page, I can actually use it to help me draw my butterfly. Now this won't be as accurate as I can get it because I don't want to bore you by you having to watch me draw this. Um, so I'm just going to do it as quick as I can and get it as accurate as I can. Um, but you can take your time on yours. And that line there. And this one here. Oh, in fact, for that one, I'm going to do a tiny little box like this and then turn it like this. Okay, so that is kind of half of the butterfly. Um, I'm going to then move it so I can actually see what I've got and see what I can how I can make it better. So you can see here that I've got parts of the butterfly shape. What I'm going to need to do is just make sure some lines overlap. Otherwise, I won't be able to use my delete part tool like that um, or delete the whole thing. So I need to just make sure things overlap a little bit by moving it up. Okay, then I can use the delete part tool and you get to that by holding down with your button on your mouse and sliding across and I can delete out the bits I don't need and it will delete anything that crosses with another line like this oh, I'll be able to get that one. Yes, then I'm going to draw around the whole thing I'm going to copy it and I'm going to flip it because it's symmetrical and then I'm going to put this where it needs to be that looks about right and again I can delete out the bits I don't need so inside here I can just get rid of these lines Ooh, and I need to zoom in to get rid of those little bits there and that bit there then um, I'm going to group it together by going here and then edit and group because of the angle of this picture that butterfly is actually longer so I'm then going to drag it and make it longer Oops. Um, and place it in my front view Okay, that looks about right. The one thing I haven't got is this line here which shows construction line which shows it's two pieces of wood put together. So I'm actually going to add in that line. I'm going to guesstimate where it needs to go. I'm going to do it all the way up into the top bit because that will also have the construction line. And now I'm going to measure and check I've got it in the right place with the dimensions tool. And, oh, how lucky is that? I've got it in the right place. If it wasn't in the right place, though, I'm going to show you a quick 
so 27 27 i'm going to show you a quick way um that you could move it so say it was one mil out if you use this contour tool the third one across you can actually contour um at against a line so say this was one mil out if i went okay and i contoured then i know that the line that i've just drawn would be right and i could delete out the other one but i don't need it in this case because i managed to get it accurate um, my butterfly looks a little bit out, so I'm going to just try and move that over, which might be ooh, very difficult to, because um, I'd need to change my step block for that to get it really accurate, but I think that's accurate enough for this. Um, then I'm just going to delete out those lines I don't need there. Now, to make this show up um, and make it more visible against all the lines I'm going to add into my dimensions. I'm going to actually select all of this and I'm going to go to the line tool and I'm going to do it as a thick line, but I'm going to change it so it's one mil, so it's not really thick and ugly, but it's got some thickness to the line. Now, the thing that it's done now is um, put that back to a solid line. So I'm just going to make that my dashed line again. So it knows that it's not really on there, but it's just part of the construction. Okay, so there you have it. Now the next thing I need to do is add in dimensions. So if I use the dimension tool here and I click on one edge or one corner to the other corner, I can then drag out and I can add in my dimension. So if I want the dimension on the outside, I drag my cursor so it goes on the outside. If I want the dimension in the middle, I push in so my cursor goes in the middle. And then it will give me my dimension, which is 54. I also need the dimension for this. And again, I'm going to push it in the middle, which is 44, which actually isn't right. But that's okay because I'm going to show you how we can change that manually to make it right. Um, then I'm going to just add in my lines on here. So try and keep your measurements lined up as well because it also makes it look really nice and neat. I want to add in the measurement to show the length of my butterfly from top to bottom. You might want to add in more measurements on the butterfly. For instance, you might want to add in the measurement for just that wing, maybe, to, so it's really clear on how it's made. Um, you might want to add in that dimension there to show how fat or how big the tail is. Um, and then this dimension here. So for how deep the hole is, the blind hole. And there I've got all my measurements. One last thing is this one. Show the size of the wood. You can do it on both sides. Again, keeping it all lined up, you can see it looks much neater. Now, this one should say 45. And I'm going to change that dimension using... Uh, the properties tool so if I click on the select tool the arrow and I click on here you can see that property appears down here in the corner if I click on this and go it goes takes me to this measurements at the moment it says auto if I click on manual and text I can actually change that measurement to say what I want it to say and it will now change to 45 um, so now it's accurate for the person making it that they know that they have to use a 45 mil force in a bit for that. Now, the one last thing I like to do, which you don't have to do, is I like to change the colour of the measurements so that it's really obvious that it's different to the construction lines of the work. So I'm just clicking on everything, holding down shift. And then if I go to colour here... I can change that colour to a different colour and then it's really obvious where my measurement lines are and what are my actual product construction lines. And there you have it, you've got your top view, you've got your front view, you've got your side view and you've got invisible lines to show construction detail. Oh, one thing I need to do is take out that because that wouldn't be there. 
Okay, good luck. I hope you enjoy.